So now my point of view, I basically feel that countries like Pakistan, we should not become partisan in this. You know, this, we should not pass value judgments on this or moral judgments on this. The reason, uh, I don't feel that our countries should uh, get involved in conflicts that don't affect us. And I'm talking about developing world, countries like Pakistan, which have 100 million people vulnerable, almost 50 million people below the poverty line, 50 million people above the poverty line. And so when we make moral judgments in conflicts, uh, it, it comes at a cost for countries like us. So, for instance, we would wa have wanted cheap oil from Russia. We would have wanted uh, wheat from two million tons of wheat from Russia. Uh, a gas pipeline uh, was arranged uh, with, with a Russian company. So all that gets affected the moment you take sides. And, you know, our neighbor India, which is a, which is a part of the Quad, which is a strategic military, uh, uh, economic military alliance with the United States, India abstained in this because they too felt that they needed cheap oil from Russia. And what this conflict has done uh, post the COVID situation where already there was a commodity super cycle uh, and this conflict has raised energy prices to the level which is causing a lot of problems in Europe. We all know that in Europe they are suffering from gas shortages and energy prices spike. But in the developing world, it has caused a massive problems in our balance of payments because or it has just the oil prices going up there i know they're coming down now but that caused a enormous problem for countries like us so therefore my take on this there are two points of view we would like to abstain my country we would like to abstain in this uh, but i do feel that this uh, conflict has caused massive problems all over the world. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your answer. Uh, the next question is about China, and always will we'll ask that question. Uh, keeping prevention in Iran to how the West inter uh, interferes in the internal affairs of Pakistan as well. Um, and, and of course, you know, we, uh, many of us believe that there's a, a personal um, issue here for yourself also. Since the 1979 Iranian revolution, Iran adopted a, a kind of policy of independence, neither east nor west, as they called it, uh, and coupled that, in fact, with the hostility towards foreign powers, uh, promoting what it regarded as its version of an Islamic state. Um, that country, Iran, has now lived under sanctions for 43 years, almost. Sanctions, destabilization, etc., um, with the objective, of course, of regime change in Iran. From a Pakistani perspective, how do you view Iran? Um, a hostile power, a potential strategic partner, a competitor? Um, and I ask this question particularly in light of your earlier comments about non-alignment, I think, which is a, a very valuable uh, articulation. Um, and, uh, and how exactly is Western pressure on Iran similar to that on Pakistan? Well... Uh in, 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 the, in Iran, during uh, Mohammad Mossadegh's uh, premiership, and his government was removed, and this is now documented, was removed by the CIA. And it was uh, because uh, an independent-minded prime minister came and took over in Iran and wanted uh, to, to make policies for the interest of the people of Iran. And so we all... You know, the, uh, we, we all know what happened to him. You know, there was this, first of all, there was this um, uh, campaign, uh, propaganda campaign against him in the media. Then it was uh, the opposition parties were paid to do uh, demonstrations against the government of uh, Pre uh, Prime Minister Mossadegh. And then, and then the, his own party members were given money to change party affiliation. And eventually, it was the, uh, the, the final was the, was the army which removed him. So it was a very similar uh, pattern followed uh, in when my government was dismissed. But, you know, let me just talk about Iran. I find that it is most important 
for a country to live with dignity and self-respect. I mean, that for me is the most important thing. You know, we Muslims, uh, you know, uh, our oath with the Almighty is La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. It gives us dignity, self-respect. We, you know, we are not supposed to bow in front of anyone but the Almighty. And the Muslim countries, you know, when they become subservient or when they become client states, when they lose their dignity, you know, and unfortunately in Pakistan, we have suffered from this. I have found the Pakistan's foreign policy, vast majority of the people of Pakistan have found it uh, very undignified because we have relied on aid and we stretch our hands and we get money or we, or we fight other people's war and then, you know, we participate. A lot of our own people die in this and, and, and we, we do it for foreign aid or U.S. dollars. And I think, you know, it has consequences for a society. Number one, the con society never learns to stand on its own feet. Because only when you stand on your own feet do you realize your strength. But when you're always having crutches of foreign aid, just because you know you're trying to serve someone else's foreign policy objectives, you lose your dignity. And for me, uh, I, the people of Iran might have suffered, but you know they haven't lost their dignity. They, they, you know, we, we will disagree with you know maybe what their worldview is. We might disagree with their worldview of Islam, but you know you cannot disagree with them standing for their sovereignty. So, you know, I admire that about them.